hi my darlings welcome back to my channel so today's video i'm going to literally be just in you guys of our travel journey from nigeria to the yonke london precisely the immigration issues we faced in nigeria carrying this useless royal air maroc flight everything our eyes went through in this flight the food the services everything you just need to know and then uk point of entry questions guys this is another gist on its own and i'm literally going to be you know talking about the whole thing in this video and then you know transport to wherever it is you're going what it costs what you should do what you shouldn't do everything so you guys might want to watch till the very end it's finally time to travel and on the 24th of august we headed to muritala airport in lagos only for this to happen what kind of uh -uh. so the ghana must go abroad i cannot use it it's the same. Hello. Maybe Katira. Which one is that extra bill again? It's key. You want to give us for free? No, no. When you said any bolo, I bought this one that has tire, and I left it back at home because I felt. Ghana must go as well. He said the bag I left at home, then I have to come and carry. What am I supposed to do? I will let back there. I hate you, Mama. I don't need to be have any choice, so we go back home. So that is how we got there and they said that I cannot carry my Ghana must go inside because Air Maroc has stopped people from, you know, using Ghana must go. So you have to buy that black bag and they were selling one for 8k. We eventually bought one for 5,000. But since I had two Ghana must goes, I bought three actually. I bought three of them. So 5,000 times three, that's 15k. And then they also did not allow my siblings and my friends to enter the airport. They wanted us to bribe them before they can enter. My friends were outside for at least three hours. It was later they decided to just go because they were still not allowing them to enter. My auntie now went back downstairs to go and bring my two sisters in and had to pay the security guys to bring the both of them in. So I wasn't given the chance to say goodbye to my friends because I was even thinking that at the end of the day they would still be able to enter. But we needed to bribe the security guys. It was after we landed that some people were now telling us that we could have passed different gates and they wouldn't have known and all of that. But that's over, Sha. So we came here to scale the bags and this was weighing 25.5, which meant that we needed to take some things out of it so it can weigh 23 kg, which is the required kg. But at the end of the day, they allowed us to carry more than 23 kg. I carried a 25 kg bag, a 26 kg bag, and yeah, the highest was 26 kg actually. This was the part where we started removing stuff from each other, you know, so that one bag would be lesser than the other one. And this foolish bag that these airport people asked us to buy now started to tear again. Like the bag is not even strong. So I would just advise us that before you even travel before you start packing your things buy this kind of bag already from your house and you know pack your stuff inside don't bother with any ghana must go Oh, Miss Mem. <laughs> Should I be crying? Mm. <laughs> and my blue soul. I'll miss you. You are doing like you know, Miss Mem. Now you'll be saying that's beautiful. I'll come. I'll come. I'll come. I'll come. And blue beloved. Ah. And why you? And why you look deal? I should have been saying no more. I just have to be sending money all over the road with me. And Terry, yeah. And Terry. 
Yeah. And then my auntie that will not let everybody rest. <laughs> oh, she's just helping us to do everything. Experts, the lay experts. Uh, airports general manager. She's the owner of fun. My auntie is the owner of fun. She knows all the rules, all the regulations, all the what to do and what not to do. She, she, yeah, my auntie is advising you have to be smart. If not, what? She's done advising. You'll be lonely at the top. If not, what? Beg, 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 beg. Mommy! Mommy! What? Jesus! What? Jesus! Mommy! Did they really have to do that? And see the very silly boy here. Yeah. I don't want to leave now. Daddy, 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 Daddy. Do you really want us to go? No. <sighs> this is getting. I'm very hungry. This is getting realer. I'm going to. I'm going to pack myself now. I just wanted to do video. Now it's freaking real. We're moving. Let's go. And start crying inside the plane. <laughs> Guys, we're leaving finally. Mommy, I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. See, beloved. And Terry. Oh, I'm so cool. And my auntie. <laughs> I'm actually crying already. I'll miss you guys. <laughs> My bad mommy. I'm So after saying our goodbyes we got to this area where we're supposed to board the flights and before we got to this area or more we spent money because the um airport officials were collecting money to check passports after they are done checking your passport they will collect money even where i went to weigh my bag again you know i'd already weighed my bag and it was saying 25.5 i got to where they will now wait go 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 and it was reading almost 27 and i'm like how is it possible and then they were telling me eh, that that scale is broken i already got their logic that they just want to use it to collect money so i had to pay another money again so that they would just allow the bags fly and so just make sure that you have more than enough money the only officials that did not ask us for money or collect mo for money from us in this area was the um immigration officers they did not ask us for money and they would also ask for the address of where you are going to so just make sure that you have your address already and yeah we stayed for like 30 minutes to almost one hour before we could even enter the plane because they wanted to wait for um the air maroc plane to arrive first before we can you know board it so after arrival we waited for like 30 minutes to almost one hour and then we're now finally allowed to you know board the plane also before you get to the airport make sure that you have um at least two thousand naira each for every bag that you're carrying because you pay for agriculture you declare the food items you carry so once you pay for agriculture you don't have to now give those um, airport officials money again but they can play smart with you and remove your agriculture tag which is what one of them did to us he removed the agriculture tags in all of our bags and then made it look like we had not paid for it so he was now telling us that eh, we cannot fly with um what's it called with with prawns with fish that if we know that we want to fly that every MRF does not allow you to carry prawns and fish with you that if we know that we want to fly then we have to pay him money again i was like we paid for agriculture this man sharp we shall not end up paying him we ran away and then he caught us and started shouting at us eh, because he allowed us go abi kiniko 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 see eh, just prepare money sha that's just the cocoa prepare money for every single thing you'll be doing in that airport we got into the plane and it really wasn't what we expected we were already told that we we're going to have a connecting flight from morocco so this plane was heading to morocco and so we're thinking okay maybe when we get to morocco we'll enter a better plane 
so for breakfast we add um this bread and chicken then with tea hot tea and some milk and then we also had the offer of you know getting coca-cola or sprite and then we also add water with it the bread and chicken was filling for me but my man uh, ffo <laughs> it wasn't filling for you they also served us this yogurt it was like a mango flavored yogurt and i really really didn't like the taste it tasted weird and then gave, they gave us um cupcakes chocolate cupcakes which i held on to with my life because that felt like the only thing that made sense on the plane although the bread and chicken wasn't bad but it was cold so we had to eat cold bread and chicken and then afterwards i just slept off and by the time i woke up we we're still on air and then there's this thing with blocked years i just don't understand the dynamics or the physics behind it why your years will have to get blocked when you're on the plate or something then soon after we landed at morocco and it was actually a very beautiful sight on air and look at the condition of this plane guys he did not even have tv screen i was literally getting prepared that okay when i enter the plane we'll have movies to watch and everything and then we enter the plane and they don't have television <laughs> they don't have television that was the first part of this trip that just ruined the entire thing for me then we got to morocco we're supposed to have um a layover of about two hours before we now you know take the connecting flight to london but apparently by the time we landed okay so we left nigeria around 7 a.m instead of 6 a.m the flight was supposed to be for 6 15 but we didn't leave until like after 7 so by the time we got to morocco time had already gone so we're just trying to like look for where would you know get our connecting flight and we had to now go through checks again the same checks we did in nigeria where you take off your shoes take off your bags everything on your body except for your clothes drop your phone and everything we had to redo that same thing here again and it was just very exhausting because i was already jet lagged if that's the right english to use and i was already very exhausted so we just had to do the, all of that and then we got moving and looking for where our connecting flight was again was another issue because we we're going with the particular plane we are we were on the air maroc we were on had a lot of nigerians heading towards london or heading towards the uk so we're just following ourselves like sheep we did not know where we were going to but we're just following ourselves and this particular area smelled like money because they had like perfumes and all of that it smelled so good if i had money i would have bought perfume because they smelled really really good so we're able to eventually find where we're supposed to take our connecting flight and this took another set of minutes almost 30 minutes because you know we weren't really sure if that was the right place and when we eventually got sure we were asking other nigerians to follow us because a lot of them were already lost they don't know where they were supposed to go to so yeah that was just you know the whole thing about getting onto the connecting flight so i was already hoping that when we get to the connecting flight the initial plan was that they were going to provide another plane which was going to you know have the tv screen and every other thing tell me why we were entering the same air maroc again to london like that was just what pissed me off like why would i be inside a plane that does not have tv screen again i paid 1.2 million era for this airline like what's going on like i was so pissed they didn't have anything because i didn't download netflix movies on my phone to watch at all because i was already expecting that oh there will be um tv screens and all but apparently there wasn't so i went to the toilet to use the toilet and i was so shocked at how small this toilet is one person can only fit in in fact if you're fatter than me you have issues using this toilet because it was so freaking small like extremely sp i don't know if maybe that's the same condition with other planes but air maroc's toilet is extremely small and then um we got served lunch and this was bread and the same you got to add in the first plane and then um sugar with some spoons and stuff sugar milk sweetener everything and then sweets this was like chocolate it wasn't sweet it was just dark chocolate and this thing that was like cheese so when i opened the food i was expecting something better than like that's a better oh, well i was expecting something better than what i just saw 
the carrot was steamed and it was over steamed it was very soft it felt, it felt as if they were cooking for a child babe ordered um potato and beef i ordered potato and chicken i wanted to know what his beef tasted like so i told him to order beef then the woman that was sitting beside us i think she's arabian she didn't eat her food this was supposed to be quiche or something she didn't eat her own so she offered babe and says it was not filled up with his own food he collected it and ate it and the thing was tasteless sort of it was just egg and maybe milk or something it was very tasteless i couldn't finish my food because you know the carrots and the vegetables were over steamed and this you got um this cheese thing i think i was supposed to use it to eat the bread but me i used my own to eat my potato and chicken i didn't know i was supposed to use it to eat bread that alcohol then i eventually took that you got because um it tasted better later i slept off on the plane and that has to be the most uncomfortable sleep i've ever had in my entire life my neck was hurting even when we alighted from the plane i was still feeling all the pains in my neck and i did not know that this man was recording me right me you know since me was sleeping it was recording me anyways we got to london after like two hours plus the journey was supposed to be for eight hours including the layover but we eventually just spent six hours and then we got welcomed by rain in the uk so we landed at gatwick airport and at at some point i was wishing we landed at Heathrow airport because when we eventually entered the airport airport itself i could count the amount of blacks that were in this airport it was filled with white people i feel like that day the only plane that came in with black people was air maroc the rest of the planes the rest of the arrivals were white indians browns i i could i could count the amount of black people i literally saw oh and there's something about the breeze in the uk when we were in morocco everywhere was hot like it was hot i could not even wait to enter the airport so i could get some ac on my body but as soon as we landed in uk jesus it was cold like the cold literally slapped me i had to like wear something else i had to wear more clothes on my clothes because it was really freezing but i did not even know that it was going to be colder than this outside because the outside is way colder now to the point of entry gist so you know how they say when you get to point of entry they will ask you questions they will drill you and oh hmm, or more that thing is great so i just want to tell you that if you are traveling always pray seek the eyes of the lord because they could literally send you back from this place so right in front of us were this couple the wife was pregnant heavily pregnant the husband was the student they had a child and then they were now asking them and you said you have twenty eight thousand pounds as your proof of funds if you had the money in nigeria why didn't you pay all your school fees from nigeria they were asking him questions where's your school what are you here to do how many years are you supposed to spend here what's your co- guys and these people were in front of me i was on the queue babe and i were on the queue waiting for us to be called i was already even praying that i let it be a black person that will call us it was the black person that was asking all these questions oh they were drilling him the black man eventually went to call another girl who was also black and that was the girl that was saying you had the twenty eight thousand pounds why didn't you pay from nigeria or more the drilling was a lot like i was scared and i was connected to the wi-fi my phone was getting the babe was like are you sure they are not they are not entering our system already i went on whatsapp I deleted all my chats because i was already scared that hey jesus how am i supposed to do this eventually it was a white person that you know um attended to us a white old man and when we got to his front all he just said was oh what's the name of your course and what's the name of your school i told him and then he said okay do your finger uh, your thumb printing he told babe to do his thumb printing and said welcome to the uk and that was it i was like what that's it like that's just all we have to do i literally like had to turn back and be like wait oh. before they would say that we did not we did not yet finish let's go back and go and meet them it was like no they've answered us already i was like jesus so that's it how many people should be praying you know i just make sure that you get prepared for anything because anything can actually happen get prepared with all of your documents and all of that sha. when we we're done sha, we went to baggage claim to claim our bags and thank god my auntie already used like this ankara clothes to you know mark our bags because it was so easy for our bags to get lost in that area after i was forced to go to customs and they said ah that customs place is always that i said this is even the custom they are talking about like i just literally 
passed right through it and that was it like i was already even getting scared that this one's to ask their own questions and everything all i'll just say is that before you travel commit your journey into the hands of god because not only go off your now look at the customs that they were talking about that people can actually just spread false information to just scare you honestly but that's it child. so after we were done we went tried to look for a taxi to take us to our destination and that was where another problem arose <laughs> another problem arose see it is well <laughs> So I've been outside for like almost 15 minutes now. Yusi is literally at the reception in the cafe. I don't know what's called the cafeteria. And I'm trying to get a taxi. I don't know. I think the airport we actually landed. Or the airport we arrived at. There is no black person. Like, there is no black person. Bro, I am the only black guy standing in the midst of like what I can count like 500 of this yep I don't know what the f I'm doing I don't know where the f I am I'm supposed to be looking for a tax at black Oh, she's difficult. So, Hi guys, I'm mad at you. Quick shift, one. Babe, have, babe, shift have, away from this place. I have um, boil on my nose. So, I just arrived. I just so arrived. I'm very agreeable. You mean me? Come yes. What did I do? Let me. So, let me give you guys a quick Say recap of what happened before my memory space wipes off. First, I entered this place. And it's freaking cold. It's not that cold. It is cold. My hands are. Can you see my hands? It's not that cold. Can you see how my hands are getting wrinkled? It is freaking cold. One, two. We've been looking for a taxi for the past how many minutes now? Over one hour. In fact, two hours. I'm coming over. No, as I was saying, so my uncle called. So we've been here for almost three hours. I'm not even capping because our plane landed. Um, around after three and as i'm speaking to you at the time this is 609 609 because you're looking for taxi i should have not um booked a flight landing in gatwick airport guys don't make that mistake please let the plane land you at Ethro, i'll be ethro or whatever no, 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 no. or to mistake. manchester see if it's cheaper get it just that make sure you have a plan we, we picked we picked gatwick because gatwick was cheaper we saw a flight going to um what's it called to uh, is it ethro well i don't know the pronunciation and it was one point one point how much 1.4 per person so that was 2.8 million for both of us so my agent now called back and said oh he has found another one for 1.2 per person but it's not landing at ethro it's landing here at gatsby i was like oh no problem as, as long as it lands in london i'd be um, uh, we've not seen any black taxi because my uncle has been hammering on the fact that we should get a black taxi guy so that he can bargain the price and the guy can also help with our load like offload our load and all of that and that if it's black you know you will be wee wee now like we we will reduce price we've not seen or the only one that we've seen so far said he has been booked and that we have to book so apparently you have to book a taxi or you have to have somebody that is going to come and pick you before you can come here if not you just be almost stranded now my uncle has found somebody that is coming to pick us all the way from peckham because we're going to peckham all the way from peckham now the guy is saying 80 pounds and he's supposed to even charge aya because he's not bringing anybody here he's bringing an empty car and he does not pay him that way let's say he had the passenger that was coming to gatwick airport he would have paid him and probably collected like 40 50 pounds but because it's coming alone we have to pay him thanks too and another thing is that we're using the airport wi-fi we've been trying to buy personal data to like connect to people and all we've tried mtn it's not working once we leave this airport area now the wi-fi goes off and we cannot even reach out to anybody or talk to anybody but i'm happy that the driver knows my uncle and it was literally coming from where we were going like the house we were going to so we are very sure that i can call my uncle to tell him oh, he has dropped us so and we paid him more that kind of vibe that's still better Sha, but it's very cold as i'm talking to you my ears are cold my hands are cold see not my shut up i will blow you because you keep saying it's not that cold how can you see what he's wearing 
my hands are sick my hands they are wrinkling already you know, you my know, legs are normal. cold i'm already my nose is already getting blocked so i feel we, like this is the feeling of <coughs> shut up no don't feel it's anything than our bank. It's the Nigerian bank that i literally thought that it was the the airport was cold you know ac i know as i came out it, this man can I don't know. I think men are just wired differently, but I'm actually very cold. I, as I'm going, when I when I end this video, I'm going to go and take another jacket and wear it or carry a duvet and cover my body while I wait for the cabman because that is like going to take almost an hour before he comes here. So that's what, see, motunekata, motunekata. I just arrived. I just arrived. Motunekata. Anyways, when you are coming, don't land in that week. I bought mission, but if it's cheap, land here, yeah, sure. But if it's not, please look for somebody that will come and carry you because I've been so pissed. Like, how do I? I just want to believe that it's part of the Ozu, yeah, honestly. That's what is better. One, there are not so many crowds. So, so how does that benefit anybody? Yeah, Everybody nah, I've been seeing are just white, white, yellow, blue, blue white, so. yellow, blue. I've not seen any black. It's fine. If there's an update, we'll update you guys. I'm, I'm very Are vexed. We? Babe, and this man, another story for another day. I'm looking for did to buy my hair. Why did you not buy his hair when he was living in Nigeria? <laughs> what? What's your magic shoe? Pull on your magic shoe. Pull your lorry. I'm okay. Anyways, when the driver comes, I'll let you guys know. So I'm so angry right now. Guys, I just opened my wallet. So That's the money. And to think that all of this money inside here is just where's that pound? It's just one pound. This two pounds. Okay, this two pounds. But it's just actually one it's not up coin. To, it's not up to the coin itself. It's not up to. This it's one thousand. Same one as the coin that you tried. Okay, it's just one pound. All of this. I don't know why I did not give back enough. in Nigeria. I totally forgot. When you were picking it from the floor. She may have given it to my sister. It was when I was packing that I was seeing them. That should have given it to my sister. I'll be all those immigration people here at the airport. This all those wash. immigration people that were at the airport that were even disturbing us for money. Okay, Maybe I, I would have given them the money. Maybe I emptied my pocket for the other one. So. I don't know I had money in this wallet. I didn't. Even, I couldn't even find the wallet. But guys, see, we literally entered the UK with 100 pounds. <laughs> and it's about to remain 10, I mean, how much pounds? Like 15 pounds. Like 10 pounds. Because we're paying 80 pounds for taxi. And now we have left this 10 pounds. Hey, 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 hey. I just arrived. Bing work, bing work. I just arrived. See you. Oh, more. Better come with pounds. Don't worry yourself. Exchange pounds before coming, no, because there's no place to do exchange rates here or be exchange or whatever. They will charge more. Your Naira is useless. Is, you will never get an exchange for that. It's not dollar. even dollar. You have to, yeah, you have to get in dollar as well. After spending like four hours, uh, we're going to taxi to take us to our destination and we paid 80 pounds. 80 pounds! It's from the airport, so we were already paying bills. And guys, I don't know why these people are using Benz as taxi. Benz! Benzima! To do taxi! We actually told that it would have been cheaper if we had landed at Ethro Airport, but I just want to believe that God had a reason for making us land in Gatwick, honestly. Guys, we finally got home, and this is like, if not after nine, we left um, Gatwick around seven. I was just getting home. I'm so tired. Baby's trying to pack um, our bags inside with my uncle. And guys, yeah, I don't know if I can even record anything again today, but maybe tomorrow. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. My phone memory is very full now, so yeah, tomorrow. Bye, guys. <laughs>